All right, and welcome back, guys. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to quickly and effectively grind the Dark Aether Camo in the brand new Mauritur Toten map. Now, when this map first came out and I started playing and grinding on it, honestly, I didn't really think it was gonna be that great for grinding camos, but the more I play on it, and after finishing our Dark Aether in one game challenge last night, I've started to realize there's some really good spots on this map, and it might actually potentially be faster than Firebase C and D Machina in some aspects of grinding. And even if this strat isn't massively faster than the Firebase C strat, I still definitely prefer this one, just because we've been playing on Firebase for many, many months, and it's so nice to be able to grind and play on a brand new map that's not going to put you at a massive disadvantage. And on top of that, we get to see the brand new Pack a Bunch camo, which is always a W. Now, for the class setup, it's going to be super simple. Obviously, your starting weapon is going to be the weapon you're wanting to grind camos for. And then for your field upgrade, you're going to be using the Ring of Fire. Now, obviously, while grinding for camos, you want to have as many of your skills fully upgraded as possible. But the most important ones is Cryo Freeze Tier 5, pretty much all of the perks except for, you know, Tombstone. For field upgrades, you want to have the ring of fire maxed out and then for the weapon class you definitely want to try to have the weapon class you're working with maxed out so if you're doing assault rifles you want to try to get those to tier five but i mean you can do it without having things tier five but it's definitely a recommendation to maybe work on that first before you start grinding camos. If you are looking for a guide to show you how to grind the Dark Aether Crystals as quick as possible, I'm gonna have a guide linked in the description below. That way, if you want, you can go watch that video first, grind out all your crystals, max out everything you need, then come back here and start working on grinding the Dark Aether Camo. Now, one last thing before we go ahead and load into game, the main focus of this guide isn't gonna be grinding weapon XP. The thing we're gonna focus on mainly is spots to get critical kills really quick for your weapon. If you're looking for a full guide that covers weapon XP strategy, sniper strats, melee strats, pretty much the full ins and outs of the full Dark Aether camo grind. I'm gonna have a link to a guide that I made for that below. All right, now that that's out of the way, I've gone ahead and loaded in game. I recommend spending the first five rounds in spawn, and at the end of the fifth round, we'll go ahead and start opening the map. In this gameplay, I'm actually using the Ice Drake for the Krieg, mainly because I want to see how this looks with pack a bunch camos. I have a feeling this is going to be an amazing variant and look super cool once we start getting some of those higher tier pack camos on it. All right, there we go, Nuke. All right, so the end of round five, turning round six, I'm going to go ahead, open up power and all that stuff. While I'm doing that, if you're new here and want to sub, I would greatly appreciate it. We just hit our goal of 115k subs. And on top of that, I got to give a huge thanks to everyone who's going to like, comment, and watch this video in its entirety. Those three things help me and my channel out massively. And you know what? Funny enough, these Tempest actually do count as boss kills for your weapon. So by the time you've got Pack-a-Punch open, you're already going to have three boss kills for your weapon. You have the two Tempest for power, and then you also have the Dementor that floats above the Pack-a-Punch machine. And of course, we went down already, kind of trying to explain that as I took down a Tempest. Cool, cool, cool stuff. And there we go. Went ahead, got Pack-a-Punch open. Let's see what the camo looks like on this. Dude, that is fan freaking tastic. To be perfectly honest, I'm not a big fan of the Krig and Zombies. It's got one of the highest time to kills out of any AR when it comes to zombie stuff. But uh, I might just run it with this pack a bunch camo because holy crap, the Ice Dragon with almost this Ice style pack a bunch camo on it looks fan freaking tastic. But besides pack a punching, you want to go ahead, put Cryo Freeze on your weapon as well. And now we're going to head up top where the Wonder Fizz machine is for the next few rounds. So go ahead, use the grappling hook to get up here. And we're not going to camp up here for the entire game. It's just these early rounds kind of take so long with how slow the zombies are. I like to just get in a pretty quick spot to start it off with. So as soon as you pack your weapon and as soon as you get cryo freeze on it, I sit here until we have enough to buy all of our perks and pack our weapon a second time. And I'm not sure why I said I sit here because I actually sit over on this side. This side's a lot easier. You're able to kind of shoot the zombies as they spawn up over here. And when they come in through this window or this window, you can just really easily headshot them. Oh, and there we go. A panzer. And let's use a ring of fire, and there we go, he's done. I see a lot of people recommending not to use any ammo mods when grinding for camos. That's just simply not the case. You definitely want to be using Cryo Freeze. It's not going to steal any of your critical kills. All Cryo Freeze does, once you've got it maxed out, is it slows down the zombies each time you shoot them, and it allows you to do an additional 25% damage after you've frozen them. So you're going to be able to get a lot more kills on zombies on higher rounds using it, and it's going to slow them down so you have a higher chance of living. And it's super helpful on this map because the most annoying boss on this entire map has to be the Panzers. You do additional damage to Panzers with Cryo Freeze, so it is a no-brainer choice for this map. Well, at least when grinding for camos. And there we go. Finally have enough points to go ahead and buy all of our perks. I recommend buying everything but Tombstone. If you personally like Tombstone and you like to revive yourself with it, Go ahead and get it. I don't use Tombstone at all, so I'm just not going to get it. I do recommend getting all the other perks, though. Even Mule Kick and Elemental Pop. Elemental Pop, so you're able to use your Cryo Freeze a little bit quicker. It does mean that sometimes you're going to activate Shatter Blast and other stuff that's going to steal your kills. But overall, I think it's best just to have it, especially for that speed reload. 
And in the end game, it's not going to waste that much time with the additional kills it gets. Same thing goes for Mule Kick. Even though we're probably only going to have one or two weapons this entire game, the fact that Mule Kick lets enemies drop ammo when you kill them is huge. And that's going to save us from buying a lot of ammo in the future. So 100%, you definitely still want to get Mule Kick, even if you're only going to have one weapon. So with the way this method works, there's actually three early game strats and one late game strat, meaning you have an option of three different areas to choose from from the early game. But at the very end, once we get into later games, like round 40 plus, we're all going to move to the same spot. This right here is the first early game strat. I kind of prefer this one over all of them. It's a little bit slower in terms of spawn, but the zombies funnel straight towards you and you're able to just kind of hit fire zombies. And you've got a zip line right here. At any point in time, if you get overwhelmed, all you got to do is either jump off the edge down here or take the zip line and you're able to buy armor from over here, kind of readjust and get back up here. So out of all three of the starting strats, not the quickest one, but it's very safe. And honestly, it's just convenient. Some of the other strats you're going to have to, you know, back and forth with zombies to make sure you're getting the headshots. But all you have to do with this one, you can kind of take your hand off the other keyboard, look back and forth and mainly shoot zombies from here and here and here. Now for the location of the second early game strat, we're going to head back underground. And uh, while we're heading down here, let's go ahead and buy some armor and upgrade our weapon because it's round 18, still rocking a red tier weapon like we usually do if we can back out of the machine. The second one, you want to head back into the power room. But for this early game strat to work, you want to make sure this door stays closed. This is the side that's got the crafting table. And from this point, what you want to do is kind of sit here. The spawns in this area are faster, but as you can see, the zombies come at you at way more directions. It's kind of harder and you've definitely got to pay a lot more attention. And it just takes a lot more energy. If you're going to be grinding for camos for hours and hours on end, even though this strat right here is faster, it's going to get old pretty quickly because you're constantly looking back and forth and you really got to pay a lot of attention. Whereas in the strat that we showed up top earlier, you can kind of put on a podcast or a TV show and kind of mindlessly grind because you're because you're not focusing near as much as constantly readjusting your aim to shoot the zombies. But when you're sitting down and focusing, this strat's really effective and it's going to keep you up until about round 35, potentially all the way up to 40. But uh, this is just not a strat I use because when I'm grinding for camos, I kind of want to chillax, you know, watch a podcast because going back and forth, just grinding for camos for hours gets a little bit boring if you're being fully focused the entire time. And now while we head to the third location, let's go ahead and pack our weapon for a second time. Here is the second pack a bunch tier on the dragon. And I don't know. I like this. I don't know if I like it as much. I kind of like the red accents a little bit more. The blue is definitely a lot more vibrant on this. It's almost like a bluish green. Uh, still an amazing looking weapon with these pack a bunch camos to use. And actually, I almost forgot for the third location, we actually need brain rot on our weapon. So go ahead, buy another weapon off the wall, head back to the pack a punch machine and put the brain rot ammo mod on it because it is required for us to open this area. Now for the final starting strat, you probably already guessed it. We're going to be opening up the room where you get the Klaus hand. So go ahead, turn a zombie in that room right there. That turn zombie will then proceed to open this door. We're going to be camping in this spot right here. This spot's kind of a mixture of the two strats before. This has a really fast spawn rate. And with this, all the zombies line up pretty well for you. So you really don't have to do any thinking or moving. You just kind of spray in front of you and you kill all the zombies. The bad part about this spot is there's really no way to back up. Once you're here, you're kind of here. You really got to be careful on your ammo. Because if you run out of ammo and you don't have a backup weapon, you're going to end up going down. You're really kind of at the mercy of this. You probably want to have stuns or some kind of backup plan once you get cornered. Because if things go south in this spot, it's very easy to go down and potentially lose your game. One cool thing, though, is if you get overran, you can always go to the lock combination here. And zombies don't target you when you're here. So sometimes you can kind of just stay alive by, oh, I'm overran. But see right there, it doesn't always work. So I wouldn't rely on it too much. So if you just need a second to breathe, you can kind of go over here to the dial Potentially let the zombies run away so it gives you a chance to reload. And it's kind of like a small backup plan. It's actually a really neat feature. This is the only time in a zombies game in COD history that I can think that you can go up to something, interact with it, and then you're just completely invincible. Yeah, and Panzer's in this spot, especially if you don't have your Ring of Fire charge. Little scary. I think this is probably the most beneficial spot out of all of the ones we showed. It's just really high risk, high reward. And a lot of times I prefer more of a chill grind. So my personal favorite is the Wonder Fizz machine. But for these early rounds, out of these three spots, just kind of try them all and see whichever fits your personal play style. Oh, and now that we have the points, let's go ahead, put the final tier pack a punch onto the Krig here. And dude, this dragon just looks so sick with all these pack a bunch camos. I still, th I don't know, dude. It's so hard to pick which one I prefer. It's definitely either the first one or the third one here. All right, now that it's round 30, we're going to go ahead and go to the second phase of this strategy. Depending on what weapon you're using and how comfortable you feel staying in your strat, usually I'll stay about till 25 or 30. 
And then we're going to come to this alleyway right down here, kind of past the Wonder Fizz machine. This area is a really good area, and it really reminds me of Colonel's office in Firebase C. This strat's very simple. All you want to do is kind of sit back here, continuously call in your ring of fire. And for most weapons, this is going to last you all the way to health cap. Like, you should be able to stay in this area for 55. And uh, as we get to farther and farther rounds, I'll show you what you want to do once you get overrun. There's kind of a train that you want to run to be able to buy your perks back, to be able to get armor back and all that stuff. It's only round 30, so we're not going to have that many issues quite yet. So we'll got to wait a few more rounds. Also, I would highly recommend picking up stun grenades or decoys. That way you're able to buy stuff back up there just in case you need to. Or if you get cornered, stun grenades are an amazing way to get out of a corner. As you can see, there's tons of crap spawning. So as long as you keep one stun grenade in your inventory at all times, you'll always be able to just fill up by running up here. And like, look at this we will probably never have to buy ammo because after this round ended we had full ammo and there's still more ammo drops here honestly mule kick is so good for strategies like this because at no point in time i i don't think we'll ever have to buy ammo at the end of each round we'll just be able to run up through the middle and fully get all of our ammo back so now we're on round 36, and at some points you are going to get overrun in this strat, especially with Panzers. Sometimes if you don't have your Ring of Fire ready, we do, but let's pretend like we don't. And this Panzer is getting closer and closer to us. All you want to do, take this grappling hook down here. Now you're going to be in a safe area, but on top of this, this area makes a perfect little loop. If you need to buy a quick revive, more decoys, whatever you need, you can get from that machine right there. And then on top of that, you can keep going over here. Also get more armor and if you want to upgrade your weapon and do that and then you head right back up this repel and now you can walk right back across to the spot we were just in and it's a big loop so whenever you get overrun you can do that it allows you to top off your armor it allows you to buy another self revive more decoys whatever you want and it's it's honestly a pretty nice strat like this I like to be able to just make that loop get whatever you need whereas in other maps like Firebase and D Machina if you kind of got overran and you need to buy like armor and stuff back or you know self revives kind of out of the way and you weren't able to just make a nice smooth transition like you can with this map and now here we are on round 56 past this point zombies don't get any more health all they do is get a little bit faster and if we're on round 56 using the krieg which in my opinion is one of the worst ars in zombies just because of the pure damage it does I mean, you could really realistically kind of stay here as long as you want. The only issues are going to be the Panzers. During the Panzer rounds, like right now, we are going to have to cycle down a little bit more than normal. But I've started carrying a war machine, and whenever we get Panzers, I've just been using the war machine to uh, take care of them here and there. No big deal. It does get rid of a few of our headshots because we're killing normal zombies with it. But I still think it is definitely worth it just to carry a war machine for the Panzers. Because at this round, they just take so much damage. And right now, we're sitting at about 2,700 headshots. Honestly, the ratio for headshots should be a lot better than that. But I kind of just got in the groove of things, started listening to music, and just wasn't really paying too much attention. But right before recording this, I did do this on stream for our Dark Aether in one game series. And we pretty much had an 80 to 90% headshot ratio with an SMG. So, uh, yeah, you should easily be able to do this, no problem. And, I mean, one gun per game is easily and completely realistic. You could potentially even work on two separate weapons, pull a second one out of the box. I've got the uh, Bullfrog here, which I've used on and off throughout the time, just switching back and forth. And, I mean, you've got Mule Kick now. So, if you wouldn't have three weapons, even that's possible. But, uh, yeah, that's where we're going to go ahead and end this guide at, guys. It's pretty comparable to the Firebase E strat. I don't think it's... If it is faster, it's only slightly faster. But the main part and the main reason I'm making this guide is I feel like a lot of us are tired of grinding camos on D Machina and Firebase C. And every new DLC weapon they add, I'm 100% going to be grinding on this map. Let me know if you guys want to see some guides for weapon specific stuff. Maybe a sniper guide specifically made for this map. Or maybe a melee. Well, melee guides are pretty straightforward. If you have anything to add to this strat, any other potential spots you'd like to see me test out, leave it in the comments below. But uh, with that, boys, like I said, I've got the full Dark Aether Ultimate Guide linked if you need any more specific questions with that. Um, but yeah, we're ending this one here. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially all the way to the end. And I will see you guys next time. I want to take the last moment to thank anyone who's became a YouTube member or a Twitch sub and an extra special thanks to those who have taken it above and beyond. We've got Chef, aka Chief, aka Classified. We've got the man whose name should be really easy to pronounce, Yamasta. We've got the man, the myth, the legend, Cryptic. The absolute boss, Hunter Redondu. We've got the Big Mac Bandit, Brian Plays. And my friend with the most stable PS5 ever, DX2069. All of these people have become Unlock++ members on YouTube. Thank you guys so much. True homies.